Happy New Year, everyone. First of all, I want to thank you all for all of your positive comments and helpful suggestions on my first few videos. I have quite a few ideas for more videos floating around in my head on different aspects of boas and keeping them in captivity. So if you like the contents of this video, please subscribe to the Brian Boas YouTube channel for more videos. When I was younger, I kept a variety of different reptiles, anything from iguanas to corn snakes to tortoises to various pythons. And ultimately, I decided to focus all of my efforts on just one species, which is, of course, the boa constrictor. I believe that boa constrictors are the ultimate reptile pets. And today, I want to share with you the reasons why I feel that's the case. I'm going to show some examples of animals from my collection to back up these reasons. And I hope that if you're not a boa owner yet, that this will inspire you to take a closer look at these wonderful animals. The first reason I'm so drawn to boas is simple aesthetics. They're such amazingly beautiful animals. Snakes as a group have a lot of beautiful representatives, but I think boa constrictors might be at the top of the bunch. So looking at this sub-adult Suriname red-tailed boa, you can appreciate the bright red color of her tail, as well as the intricate pattern markings, the contrast between the saddles and the background color, and then the beautiful wedge-shaped head with these exquisite facial markings. It almost looks like a work of art. I also love the musculature of boa constrictors. They might be nature's perfect ambush predator, and natural selection has designed them exquisitely well to fulfill this role in the environment. Another reason why I'm so drawn to boas is their diversity. There's just so many different types of boas available in captivity now. There's literally something for everyone. They come in all different sizes, shapes, colors, and behaviors. Everybody thinks that boas are such giant snakes, but this simply is not the case. This is an adult male qual key boa constrictor from a small island off of the coast of Belize in the Caribbean. This guy is about seven years old. He's about four feet long, and he's not going to get that much bigger than this. Boas live from, in the wild from northern Mexico all the way to Argentina, as well as on numerous islands in the Caribbean. And they've evolved into such a variety of different forms uh, in, the, in their natural habitats. There are now at least several dozen different locality specific boa constrictors available in captivity. And the goal of the locality breeder is to maintain boas in a state, genetic state as close to their natural state as possible. They only want to breed together animals that they know can be traced back to a specific location such as the Kral Key Islands in the Caribbean. Looking at the differences between the different localities can really give one a deeper understanding and appreciation of evolution. In addition to the great diversity of all the locality boas, there's also a great amount of diversity in the other main category of boa, which is the morph boa. So the goal of the morph breeder is to take naturally occurring pattern and color mutations which have cropped up in captive boas in the last few decades and breed them together to create these living works of art. This is known as a VPI T positive jungle boa. Uh, in future episodes, I'll touch on what those genes are. But you can see the unique appearance of this animal. So at this point in boa breeding, these animals are really fully domesticated animals. They're really no different from a domestic rat, hamster, or even your cat in terms of how different they are from their natural counterparts. It seems to me that in the boa breeding world today, there's really two distinct camps. There's the morph breeders and the locality breeders with something of a rivalry between the two groups. And I don't really understand why this is the case. I think we're really lucky to live in an era where there's so many different morph and locality specific boas that are available to the average keeper. This is an animal which I think is kind of cool because it's a locality specific morph. This is an anerythristic Peregrinera uh, peninsula boa from the 
Paraguanera Peninsula in northwest Venezuela. And it's lacking the red pigment, so it has this beautiful silvery gray coloration. The next reason I'm so drawn to boas is they're such interesting creatures. I remember even as a young child, I was just always drawn to reptiles. There's just something about them that's just so fascinating. And part of my reason why I decided to pursue an education in biology, which led to my career in the biomedical sciences, is my love of reptiles. In order to breed reptiles, you need to understand their biology in quite a bit of detail, including their genetics, ecology, and their reproductive physiology. So if you're a science geek like me, you might have a natural attraction to these animals. In addition, boas are a great animal when it comes to handling and interactions with the handler. So some snakes, you take them out and they just kind of lie there like a rock. Others are kind of the opposite. They want to get away or they want to bite you or defecate on you. But boas have this really nice, calm, easygoing personalities and they're just a joy to handle. Very few boas are aggressive as far as captive bred animals. Um, I only have maybe two or three animals in my collection that are not really docile and placid like this. And they're just a joy to take out and interact with. The last reason I decided to work solely with boa constrictors, such as this Bolivian boa constrictor Amorali, is I believe that they're the ultimate low maintenance pet. Unlike other types of pets, such as dogs, that you have to interact with and maintain several times a day, if you don't interact with your boa constrictor for a few days, he or she is probably not even going to notice your absence. In fact, you can even go on vacation for up to about a week or so, and as long as your animal has the proper cage set up, he or she is going to be completely fine. Boas are very quiet. They're hypoallergenic if you're allergic to fur and feathers, and you can maintain a very impressive size collection in a relatively small space. For example, you can keep a collection of nine or 10 uh, insular dwarfs, such as the Qualqui and the um, Kalkerki boas in a rack system that really only occupies the corner of a room. The husbandry of boas in captivity has been very well worked out in the last few decades, and there's many excellent books and other references that go into a lot of detail about how to maintain them. Boas are really easy pets to maintain, provided you have the right background education. And then finally, boas are inexpensive pets. A pet like a dog might cost you many thousands of dollars a year to maintain, whereas a boa can be maintained for as little as about $50 or so per year. So a very inexpensive pet. So that was four reasons why I decided to focus exclusively on boas for my reptile breeding activities. I hope this has been informative and hopefully a little inspirational. If you have any questions or comments, I'd appreciate if you would comment below. If you like this video, please subscribe to the Brian Boas YouTube channel for more similar videos. Thanks for tuning in and happy boas.